Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. I hope you're all doing okay, and I hope you're going to enjoy today's battle, because it's because it features a type of machine that I really don't seem to showcase very often, although there is a very good reason for that. You see, there's basically two types of tank destroyer in World of Tanks. You've got machines like the Tiger, the T110E3, uh, the Tortoise, machines that usually don't feature great mobility, but have great guns and a lot of armour, and can at least keep up with the heavy tanks and do benefit from getting themselves stuck into the action. And those kind of battles can be quite fun and interesting to watch. And then you've got the other kind of tank destroyer, like DJ Fighter here in the Griller 15. The kind of tank destroyer that has a honking big gun and is pretty fast and manoeuvrable, but in the case of the Griller 15, only has 30 millimeters of armor. Now, I've seen a lot of replays from people in exactly this kind of machine. It doesn't have to be exactly this machine, but machines like this. Tank destroyers that rely on stealth for survival. And people are doing extremely well in them, scoring thousands and thousands of damage and multiple kills. But they're kind of boring to watch. Because usually, in order for one of these types of tank destroyers to do well, they have to stay hidden. And while there's a certain level of intellectual admiration that you can feel towards somebody who does well by doing that, because let's face it, they're playing to the strengths of the machine, watching somebody sit in a bush and kill targets that other people are spotting for 10 minutes is rarely interesting to watch. Occasionally they do get very interesting to watch, but usually because something's gone horribly, horribly wrong and when you only have 30mm of armour, as in the case of the Griller 15 here, even high explosive ammunition is going to do full damage to you. So it tends to get interesting for a very short period of time and then you're dead. So when I do get a replay that lasts the whole nine yards and somebody's in one of these machines and it's actually fairly exciting, it's a pretty rare occasion. And that's what we have today. The first thing that I'd like to point out here, and some of you may have already noticed it, is that DJ understands that staying stealthy doesn't necessarily mean just sitting in a bush. There are other ways to shoot without being seen. If you pay attention to the minimap circles, you'll see that up until now, he's managed to shoot and avoided being spotted simply by virtue of staying outside of the view range of the tanks that he's shooting at. Now, as long as his team stays firm in the town there, he can continue to do that, although he was having some problems with the terrain blocking line of sight, which is why he's moved up to this slightly raised piece of ground here behind a bush and knocked a tree over to help him with it. And just in the off chance, if somebody's out there that he can't see, who might be within view range, he's backing off when he fires, but he did not get detected, which is a fairly reliable indicator that the enemy tanks that are visible in front of him are the only ones that are actually in front of him. And as you can see, now that he has determined that this is a safe firing spot, he's not backing away from it on the second and subsequent shots. He knows that if there was an enemy tank down here that had line of sight to him when he fired, he would have been detected the first time. Because he didn't get detected the first time, he knows there's nothing down there. Although it is worth bearing in mind that while that kind of information can provide you with a reasonably high level of confidence, it's time-sensitive information. So he'd be paying attention to his sixth sense icon. Just because there wasn't anything down there the first time he fired, doesn't mean that something can't have moved into that position in the meantime. But no, nope, he's still good. Jingles, I thought you said this battle wasn't going to be all about somebody just sitting in a bush and farming kills on targets that other people are spotting for him. Yeah, I did say that, and yeah, he kind of is doing that, but that's the strength of this type of tank destroyer, and you should probably be trying to play to the strength of whatever machine you're driving for as long as you possibly can, or at least until you no longer can, and you're forced to adapt and improvise. And don't worry, that moment is approaching. And there are a lot of tank destroyer players out there who don't know how to adapt and improvise when that moment approaches. It's one of the reasons why so many of the replays featuring this type of machine are as boring as they are. Oh dear, that was a good shot. 
Um, because either the battle goes extremely well, and they just sit in the same spot and farm kills and damage, or the battle goes extremely well up until the point where their teams start losing, and they have to start finding targets for themselves, at which point they just get wrecked, because you're driving a machine that only has 30mm of armour. And this is more or less the point where things start to go wrong. Crucial shot there on the IS-7, failed to penetrate, no idea why. Personally, I think DJ was robbed. That led to the death of the Progetto 65, who was anchoring the defence in the western end of the town, which is allowing more and more of that mass of enemy tanks over there to swarm around the few remaining defenders. And once those defenders go down, there's no longer anybody spotting for DJ. And just as, if not more importantly, there'll also be nothing left to stop all of those enemy tanks from moving forward and rolling right over DJ. So DJ really needs to start doing either one of two things, and preferably both. Either start killing tanks in the town rather than just doing damage to them, or if he can't do that, reduce them to such low health that they're one-shot kills, which tends to discourage people from poking out and risking getting shot at. Oh, and shots like that are not helping his case. <laughs> well, it was like the shot at the IS-7 earlier. Perfect sign of a target to shoot at, but RNGs has decided nope. And that just leaves a lone Super Conqueror in the town, with enemy tanks closing in on him from all sides. And DJ and the Death Star doing their level best to discourage those enemy tanks from closing in on the Super Conqueror. Because right now, DJ's team only has six tanks left alive, and two of them are artillery. The other, a Progetto 65 medium tank, who's on such low health that he's camping behind a bunker in the middle of the field to the west, and he's decided that for the rest of this battle, he's a stealthy tank destroyer too. Nice. Team starting to pull some of the kills back. I hesitate to attribute this to teamwork. Um, I'm pretty sure that everybody is just working in their own best interests here, because they all know that if that Super Conqueror dies, <laughs> they're next. But at the same time, the enemy team are equally aware that there's a Death Star and a Gorilla 15 out here, two machines that are easily capable of doing at least 750 damage in one shot. So none of them are too keen to push their luck on that Super Conqueror. And that's basically what's keeping the Super Conqueror alive. Well, that and the Super Conqueror playing extremely well. Um, looking after his health and not trying to bite off more than he can chew. He's also aware that his best chance of staying alive is to let the big guns behind him do all of the heavy lifting for him. All he has to do is not die and light targets up for the tank destroyers and the artillery. And he's doing a pretty good job of that. But here's the real test. There are no longer any enemy machines spotted, so is the Super Conqueror going to sit there continuing to get hit by artillery? <laughs> or is he going to push his luck? No, no, he's playing it cool. He just took a little peek, spotted a couple of targets, but that allowed artillery to zero in on him, but he's still got most of his health remaining. Ooh, 1143 damage. I spoke too soon. I think he just took a hit from the E3 and something else. And it looks like he just used his repair kit to get his tracks back up, so a fairly critical moment there for the Super Conqueror. But then, DJ spots a target shooting at the French Progetto. He did pull back from the bush to fire, but he's just realised that he's going to get spotted anyway, because it wasn't the Progetto that was spotting him. It's the enemy S-Tank, who's just killed the friendly Progetto, and can see him. Artillery's on the ball. Ooh, the S-Tank fires and just misses. It's going to take more than one shot to kill that S-Tank. And the S-Tank is going to get to fire again, and he does, and inflicts some damage, and it looks like he's damaged his ammo rack. We can't have that. Uses the repair kit, DJ's going to need all the DPM he can get to survive the next few minutes. The Death Star finishes off the enemy E4. The Super Conqueror is still hanging on. Oh, enemy E3 spotted. Now this is going to be a difficult shot, even with even with gold ammo and 334mm of penetration. Uh, tried to hit the front of the casemate, avoiding the gun mantlet, but it didn't penetrate. Plenty of targets available to be shot at, but that's not actually a good thing. The reason there are plenty of targets to shoot at is because the Super Conqueror has been flanked on both sides. He did a great job, but his luck has finally run out, and the E3 managed to kill him without taking a single point of damage in return. It looks like Artillery is trying to do at least some damage to him, and DJ tried, but unfortunately DJ failed. 
So it's DJ and the Death Star and two artillery versus a TVP, who's a one-shot kill. The S-Tank is a one-shot kill. The E3 is very definitely not a one-shot kill, not even for the Death Star. There's the TVP, and yep, he clearly knows he's been spotted, and he knows what's liable to be shooting at him, so he's taking no chances and backing right off. DJ moves up. Plenty of bushes on this side of the road. But with no Super Conqueror to spot for him, DJ's going to have to find targets for himself. Now, is the TVP going to take another look? It'd be real nice if he did. Oh, he is. Goodbye, Mr. TVP. Did DJ get spotted? No, he did not. Now, at this point, most tank destroyer players would just sit in that bush and wait for targets to shoot out, but DJ is not most tank destroyer players. He's getting sick of shooting at the front of that E3. Oh, crap, who has spotted him? He's not going to slow down for this. Keeps going. Takes a hit from the rear. Unbelievably, takes a hit from the rear from the S tank. And it bounces. <laughs> 30 millimetres of armour. <laughs> and that's at the front. Um, he keeps going. Now, he did take some splash damage from the Batch Out 15558, who we know is on the top of that hill, because one, he just spotted us, and two, just a few seconds ago, we saw his shell tracer. But no further shots. So he either has two shots left, and he's saving them for DJ, or he's busy enjoying his 50-second reload. And he was enjoying his 50-second reload. Now, taking on a batch out 15558 from the front and a machine that only has 30mm of armour may have seemed dangerous. And, well, it was. But the batch out 15558 has the lowest alpha damage of all tier 10 artillery. 750 average damage per shot with high explosive, even if it penetrates. He really needed that guy dead so he could use this 60km per hour top speed to get back to the cap and hopefully get some shots at the E3 from the rear and the S-Tank from, well, when you've got a 150mm gun any angle really. The Death Star's been holding on like a rock star and seems to be eating a lot of high explosive from the E3 but he has managed to damage the E3 in return even though they've lost one artillery in the process. Now with that amount of health DJ is going to need an above average damage roll but even if he doesn't kill the E3 in one shot he has enough health to survive the return hit and kill him with the follow-up. But because he finally got a shot at the E3 from the side and not the front, and he got a higher than average damage roll, he doesn't actually need any follow-up shot. So, that's Ace Tanker, High Caliber and Top Gun with 9,000 damage done for DJ Fiver in the normally very boring to watch Grilla 15. Of course he lost money. <laughs> Because if you can't take a joke, you shouldn't be playing tier 10 tanks. But it was worth it. Or at least I thought so. And hopefully you agree, because that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.